thinking about buying a home, you'll need to narrow down the neighborhood, the size and style of the space, the price, and the down payment. You'll also want to consider mortgage interest rates, which play a big role in whether or not the time is right to buy a house at all. Hey everybody, it's your favorite local realtor, Adam Brunel, and welcome back to my weekly video series on all things real estate. This week's topic is, how are mortgage rates determined? The mortgage rate is the one thing that can change from day to day. Even if you bought a house on the same day as your best friend, your mortgage rates could be very different. Locking in a rate on a 30-year loan is probably the most nerve-wracking part of the process. So it's critical to know how the mortgage rates are calculated. There are many factors affecting mortgage rates. Some are out of your control, but others can be impacted by decisions made before you start the home buying process. Let's start there. Mortgage rates are set based on how risky the lender determines it will be to lend you money. The riskier the loan, the higher the rate. Before getting offered a rate, your lender will assess how likely you are to fall behind on payments and how much money they'll lose if you stop making payments altogether. Here are just some of the rocks that they'll overturn before making that call. Credit scores. The most important thing a lender considers is your credit score, which is probably the clearest benchmark of the risk you pose to the lender. Scores are derived using many points of data grouped into five categories. Those five categories are payment history, don't be late on credit card payments or utility bills, it could come back to haunt you the amount owed. The amount you owe versus your available credit plays a big factor. Another reason to pay off credit cards as quickly as possible. Length of credit history. Opening accounts to establish credit is smart, but you need to use that credit and repay it on time. The longer you've had an account, the better. Mix of credit. Lenders look at all account types like revolving credit cards and installment accounts, which are structured differently. New credit. Offered a retail charge account to get a quick discount at a checkout? Skip it. Each time a bank pulls credit inquiry, it impacts your score. What's not included? So personal or demographic information, information such as age, race, addresses, Marital status, income, and employment don't affect the score. The higher the credit score, the less risky the borrower is. If credit scores, if your credit score is under 620, something in your history says you might be a risk. You'll still be able to buy a home, but interest rates will be high and you won't have as many loan products to choose from. Some may even require mortgage insurance. Borrowers with credit scores from 621 to 699 fare a little bit better. Mortgage interest rates may be lower, but you'll still be considered risky. And you may have trouble getting a jumbo loan or financing for a vacation home. Things start to, start to open up once you achieve a credit score of from 700 to 740. You'll be offered the lowest mortgage rates and have your pick of the best loan products. Before a friend or relative lends you money, they'll probably do a quick calculation about whether or not you'll pay them back. The same is true for a mortgage lender, though it takes a little longer. To convince a lender that you'll make your mortgage payments on time, you'll need a steady income. But because no one has a crystal ball and future employment is never guaranteed, the lender examines your employment history. The longer you've been gainfully employed and the fewer gaps seen in between jobs, the better. Your chance of securing a low interest rate on your mortgage or your refinance. Lenders also use loan to value ratio to determine how much risk they're willing to take on. In the mortgage world, the LTV compares the total loan amount with the market value of the home you're looking to buy or refinance. Let's say you saved up $20,000 towards the purchase of a $100,000 house. You need to take out a loan for the other $80,000. The lender would calculate the loan to value ratio at 80%. 
If you needed to borrow more, it would bump up the LTV and increase the risk. LTVs higher than 80% may result in a higher mortgage rate, especially if you have a lower credit score. The lesson here is to start saving as early as possible to keep your LTV below 80%. Always keep in mind that the low interest rates advertised online meant to lure customers in. Your rate will vary, especially taking into account the type of loan you'll need. Loans on manufactured homes, condos, second homes, and investment properties command higher mortgage rates because they are deemed riskier. Likewise, cash out refis and adjustable rate mortgages will come with higher rates. Some of what goes into determining a mortgage rate is outside of your control. Here's a quick look at what else goes into, into determining a rate. The Federal Reserve, which raises and lowers short-term interest rates in the economy, doesn't set mortgage rates, but it does influence them. Although entirely independent interest and mortgage rates usually move in the same direction, just like the stock market. That's why you need to consider what's happening in the economy when applying for a mortgage. Here's what to look out for. Mortgage rates rise when the economy is taking off, with higher consumer confidence and low unemployment. Mortgage rates drop when the economy slows, when consumer confidence reverses, and more people are, start filing for unemployment. You may ask why inflation affects mortgage rates, and the answer is inflation affects everything. As inflation rises, you pay more for groceries, gasoline, and daily necessities. So there's less available to go towards your mortgage every month, making lending money riskier. As inflation heads upward, the cost of a home may increase right along with it. That's why your debt to income ratio is so important. Keeping your debt low will combat inflation spikes. The opposite is also true. A low Inflation rate brings down the mortgage rate, which makes buying a home more affordable. The less expensive a home is, the less you may have to borrow. And that will indeed affect the mortgage rate you are offered. Once a month, the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases the jobs report, aka the employment situation summary, which looks at employment trends, how many Americans are employed, what fields are hiring, average income, and other details. It also includes the official unemployment rate. A strong report showing jobs added or wages increasing may trigger inflation, which can cause mortgage rates to rise. If the report hints at a weakening economy and there's less demand for home loans, it'll put pressure on lenders to make interest rates more attractive. Remember, all mortgage rates aren't the same. Even if you supply different lenders with the same personal information, like your credit score and employment history, you'll see a range of the mortgage rates offered. There are a number of reasons for this, besides the lender's appetite for risk, including overhead costs. Lenders who keep their overhead low have the flexibility to offer better rates. Closing costs, be careful. Lenders offering lower rates might be hiding higher closing costs, effectively having you pay points for the lower rate. Lenders typically offer rates within a percentage point of each other. If one's rate is dramatically different than the rest, it may be a red flag that critical information is missing. Be sure to ask why. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, be the cool guy or girl and give it a thumbs up. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll make sure I get back to you. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.